Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to the Editorial Analysis of Shankara Ace Academy. Today, we are going to discuss the important editorials of September 9th newspaper. In this video, we are going to discuss two important topics. The first topic is about the use of artificial intelligence in warfare. This is from Indian Express newspaper. The second topic is about the policy paralysis in public health sector. This is from Hindu newspaper. So, I have selected these two important topics in today's newspaper. Let us discuss them briefly. Now look at this article, this is about the use of artificial intelligence in modern warfare. See, there was a recent summit held in Seoul in South Korea. The summit is called as Re-AIM. Re-AIM means Responsible Use of Artificial Intelligence in Military Domain. So, this summit held in Seoul and it discusses about the global rules for using artificial intelligence in warfare. It also covers about autonomous weapons and the role of artificial intelligence in intelligence gathering and targeting in military warfare. The US and China are actively involved in shaping these rules while India has also been cautious. Hereafter, India needs to join the discussion to influence the norms and protects its own interest in this domain. So, this is what discussed in this news article. In this context, we are going to discuss about the applications of artificial artificial intelligence in defense sector and what are the advantages of using artificial intelligence in defense and what are the challenges in using artificial intelligence in defense sector. So, these are the aspects we are going to discuss in this video. Firstly, about the applications of AI in defense. One of the most important usage is autonomous system and robotics. AI is used in drones that can fly without a pilot. These drones can perform surveillance and can participate even in combat warfare. The artificial intelligence in drones allows for coordination among multiple drones so they can execute complex missions. So, this includes aerial surveillance and offensive operations. Then about the smart surveillance. The AI enhances surveillance by automating the collection and analysis of data from various sensors and platforms which enables real-time threat detection and situational awareness. There is a term called silent sentry. The silent sentry is an AI based robot which autonomously patrols along the fences or perimeters and it detects the human presence through facial recognition. So, this kind of robot is used in border security and border management. Next about cyber security and information warfare. Artificial intelligence is used to detect and respond to cyber threats, ensuring the security of military data and networks. For example, the Android malware detection solution detects and reports malware in Android applications, ensuring a secure communication and data transfer within the defense networks. So, this is about the cyber security and information warfare. The next about data analysis and decision support. See, the artificial intelligence analyze vast data for predictive maintenance and improved decision making. Recently, an Indian Army's project called Project Shaksham aims to integrate artificial intelligence for better decision making in defense operations. The next is about training soldiers. Artificial intelligence creates virtual training environments where soldiers can participate missions before going to actual battlefield. So, the AI based simulators are used by Indian Army for training purposes. Then, efficient supply management. Artificial intelligence helps in managing supplies by predicting what resources are needed and ensuring they are delivered on time. Next about human machine taming. The artificial intelligence works alongside human for enhanced decision making. For example, unmanned ground vehicle. This UGVs enhances the capability of ground vehicles to operate in various terrains autonomously. Next important application is about predicting the equipment failures. Artificial intelligence can predict the maintenance needs before breakdown of actual missionaries. Next about the combat robots. These are one of the important futuristic advancement in artificial intelligence in defense warfare. AI controlled robots that can assist in dangerous tasks like bomb disposal are being developed by DRDO. DRDO has actually developed a robot called Dux which can detect and diffuse explosives. Now, let us see the advantages of artificial intelligence in defense. The first major advantage is efficiency. AI can automate routine and complete tasks such as surveillance, target recognition and logistics which leads to more strategic decisions by army. Next about the improved decision making. AI can process and analyze vast amount of data faster than humans. So, thereby it provides commanders with actionable insights for informed and timely decisions. The examples include AI based C4 SIR command which is control, communication, computer intelligence, surveillance and recognize systems. Here, recognizance means a study of an area for military purposes. So, basically 
artificial intelligence help in informed decision making next about the increased safety and risk reduction artificial intelligence enables the deployment of autonomous systems in dangerous environments which reduce the risk to human soldiers in combat for example the autonomous drones and ground vehicles and other artificial intelligence powered robots which can defuse the bombs are very useful in improving the safety for army and other defense forces the last two applications are about the cost efficiency and technological advantages artificial intelligence can optimize logistics supply chains and maintenance schedules thereby reduces the operational cost and improve the efficiency of resource usage so it decreases the cost the next is about technological advantage ai improves weapon systems and military tools giving a tactical edge over other countries as we have seen earlier ai powered swarm drones can help greater in combat and surveillance so these are the important advantages of ai in defense sector now let us see the challenges in ai the first one is ethical and legal concerns the use of artificial intelligence in autonomous weapons raises ethical questions about who is responsible for the decision to use the lethal force for example the lethal autonomous weapon system laws might make decisions without human input leading to moral and legal concerns so this is a one major important challenge in implementing ai in defense sector the next one is cyber security risk ai system especially those connected to networks are susceptible to cyber attacks so this may lead to risk of disruption or manipulation of military operations the next important challenge is integration complexity integrating ai into existing military infrastructure can be complex and resource intensive it requires significant changes to hardware software and operational protocols next about the over reliance on technology the over reliance on artificial intelligence system could lead to vulnerabilities if these systems fail or behave unpredictably for example the ai drones can malfunction or misinterpret data leading to mistakes next about the data quality ai systems rely heavily on data for training and operation if the data is biased or incomplete or inaccurate it can lead to flawed decision making and outcomes so these are the important challenges regarding the usage of artificial intelligence in different sector this is a main question regarding this topic interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article now look at this article it talks about the policy paralysis in public health sector this article discusses the important challenges in india's public health sector and it also discuss about the challenges faced by private sector in providing health care services in india the india's public health system faces significant challenges like commercialization inadequate funding and a lack of focus on preventive care even the private health care prioritize the secondary services and they neglect the primary services and preventive care services so this is what the author discussed in this article we shall approach this topic in main exam perspective firstly we shall discuss about what are the important public health initiatives by indian government and what are the challenges faced by public health sector in india and what will be the impact of private sector on public health care so these are the topics we are going to discuss in this article discussion firstly we are going to discuss about the important health care policies of indian government the first one is national health policy which was introduced in 2017 it is introduced under ministry of health family welfare the objective of this policy is to provide affordable health care and ensure universal health coverage the key features are increased public health expenditure to 2.5 percentage of gdp by 2025 it mainly focuses on preventive and promotive health care services it aims to bring universal health coverage to primary health care one of the important component of this national health policy is introducing digital health technology the government is promoting the use of digital health technology like telemedicine and e health we have seen the initiatives like e sanjivani in digital health technologies the next one is ayushman bharat scheme this is introduced in 2018 it is aimed at achieving universal health coverage through two main components the first one is health and wellness centers and then pradhan mantri jan aarogya yojana the health and wellness center focus on providing comprehensive primary health care services including maternal and child health non communicable diseases and diagnostic services the jan aarogya yojana under ayushman bharat provides insurance coverage of up to 5 lakh per family annually it covers both the secondary and tertiary care hospitalization this is the largest government funded health care scheme in the world it provides insurance coverage of up to 5 lakh per family and it covers up to around 50 crore beneficiaries which includes 1.5 lakh health and wellness centers for primary care so this is about the ayushman bharat scheme the next one is national health mission 
2005. Previously, there were two missions, National Rural Health Mission and National Urban Health Mission and they were merged into National Health Mission in 2013. The objective of this mission is to provide equitable, affordable and quality health care for vulnerable population. It aims to strengthen health infrastructure and workforce and it also aims to promote institutional deliveries through Janani Suraksha Yojana. It provides free essential drugs and diagnostics at public health facilities. The main focus is on determinants like sanitation, hygiene and nutrition. The next important initiative is Mission Indra Dhanus. Its objective is to increase the immunization coverage for children and pregnant women to 90% by 2020. Now this scheme is extended under Intensified Mission Indra Dhanus. It focuses on risk areas where immunization levels are very low. It ensures full immunization against 12 vaccine preventable diseases. The 12 vaccines also include polio, tuberculosis, hepatitis B, diphtheria, etc. Another important initiative is National Mental Health Program. The objective is to address the growing burden of mental health disorders in India. It provides mental health services at primary health care level and promotes community-based mental health care. It aims to integrate mental health with general health care services. It is also aimed at creating awareness and stigma reduction regarding mental health. This program recognized mental health as public health issue and it led to the creation of Mental Health Care Act 2017. Now let us see what are the challenges in health care policies. The first one is infrastructure deficit. The public health care facilities, especially in rural areas, are often underfunded and under-resourced. This leads to issues such as lack of adequate health care centers, trained professionals and medical supplies. The next one is inequitable access. There is a strong disparity in health care access between urban and rural areas. The majority of India's health care infrastructure is concentrated in urban cities, so thereby it leaves the rural population undeserved. So inequitable access is another important challenge. Then there is shortage of health care professionals. India faces a shortage of doctors, nurses and paramedics, particularly in rural areas. Then health care financing. The out-of-pocket expenditure on health remains high and government spending on health care while improving is still below the global average. Then about the disease burden. India faces a dual burden of communicable disease and a rising number of non-communicable diseases. So addressing both these kinds of diseases requires comprehensive policies and consistent funding. So these are the important challenges regarding India's health care sector. Now let us discuss about the impact of private sector in health care. See the private sector plays a significant role in India's health care system thereby it provides 70% of health care services. So it has both positive and negative aspects. First let us see the positive contributions. See the private health care services has increased the access to health care. They have supplemented the government efforts by providing health care services in rural areas and the areas where public health facilities are lacking. Then about the innovation and quality. The private sector often drives innovation and introduced advanced medical technologies which offers specialized services thereby improving the patient outcomes. So innovation and quality is another major positive contribution of private health care. Then about employment. It also created jobs in healthcare sector contributing to economic growth and development. So these are some of the positive contributions. Now let us see the negative contributions or challenges with respect to private healthcare in India. The first one is high cost. Healthcare in private sector is often expensive which leads to out of pocket expense for patients. So this disproportionately affects the low income groups thereby it pushes many into power. The next one is commercialization of healthcare. The focus on profit in the private sector sometimes leads to unethical practices such as unnecessary tests and treatments. Then there is a lack of regulation. See the private healthcare sector in India remains largely unregulated. So this results in inconsistent quality of care and uneven standards in various regions. Then lastly about squid focus. The private sector tends to concentrate in urban areas which increases the urban rural divide in healthcare services. So these are the important challenges regarding the impact of private healthcare sector in India. Now let us see some points for way forward. First one is strengthening public health infrastructure. The government should focus on improving public health services particularly in rural areas by increasing investments. The second one is enhancing public private partnership. The collaboration between public and private sector can help fill critical gaps in healthcare access. So it leads to affordable healthcare, capacity building and innovation. The third one is universal health coverage. Expanding the schemes like Ayushman Bharat and improving public health insurance programs 
can help reduce out of pocket expenditure it also ensures that healthcare is accessible to all sections of society the next one is focus on preventive health care increasing awareness about the preventive measures particularly for non communicable diseases can help reduce the burden of this diseases the preventive health care means sanitation vaccination and nutrition programs the fifth one is about regulation and accountability see the private sector needs to be better regulated to ensure uniform standards of care there should also be pricing controls and account of private health care the last one is research and innovation see the investment in health care services particularly for india's unique challenges will need innovation adopting digital health technologies like telemedicine and health apps can increase the access and efficiency in health care services so these are some of the points we can provide as way forward for a mains question so this is a mains question related to this topic interested aspirants can use it with this let us conclude the discussion with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankaraya's academy youtube channel thank you for listening